Mishmor le David Adonai roi lo yaksar Pinotet she yar bitzayni Amei menuchot yenahaleyni Nafshi yashovev Yancheni bemaglei tzedek Leman shemo גם כי אלך בגי צל המוות, לא ירערע, כי אתה עמדי. שבטך ומשענתך, המה ינחמוני. תערוך לפני שולחן, נגד צוררי. תישנת בשם מראשי, כוסי רוויה. אך טוב וחסד ירדפוני כל ימי חיי, ושבת בבית אדוני לאורך ימים. A Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in straight paths for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest the table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. כרחם אב על בנים ריחם אדוני על ירא אב כי הוא ידע יצרנו זכור כי עפר אנחנו אין נוש כחצר ימיו כציץ השדה כן יציץ. As a father has compassion for his children, God has compassion for those who show reverence. God knows how we are fashioned and God remembers that we are but dust. Adonai's compassion is everlasting. God's kindness to children's children, to all those who are faithful, endures age after age, unchanging. A season is set for everything, a time for every experience under heaven. A time for planting and a time for reaping. A time for loving and a time for hating. A time for embracing and a time for refraining. A time for slaying and a time for healing. A time for laughing, a time for weeping. A time for dancing, a time for wailing. A time for birthing, a time for dying. A time for speaking, a time for silence. A time for seeking, and a time for losing. We gather today, a very difficult day, to say goodbye to a mensch, an incredible man. Dr. Milton Moss, a loving son, husband, father, physician, and friend. Every single year we read the Torah and we rejoice at its end even though the final section details the death of our leader, our teacher, Moses. Upon its completion, we joyously return to the beginning and start to read again from its opening. Judaism teaches that our lives are like a book our actions and words are recorded. This week, Dr. Milton Moss's book was finished, its last chapter sealed both in ink and in tears, as the rabbis imagine Moses crying while writing the final chapters of the Torah. And so it is for us today, we must go back and start from the beginning to share all of Milt's stories his life story that's filled with so many blessings and so much love. An adoring wife, four incredible children, so many patients and friends. I know that his book will be well-worn, 
well loved, read aloud for years to come, as we always hold Milt so fondly in our hearts. Dr. Moss has departed from this world just shy of 83 years with a good name and in peace. And he leaves behind his mourning, his beloved wife, life partner, best friend, married for more than 37 years, you Esther, his four children, Louisa, Joel, Ben, and Betsy, and sister-in-law, Norma. Milton now joins his parents of blessed memory, Rose and Leo, in their eternal home in heaven. At this point, um, Betsy and Louisa have some special words to share. I'm first going to call upon Betsy, or if you want to come together, Betsy and then Louisa. This is a poem written in my first year away from home. It's called Riding in the Car with You. In the evening, the crisp hour of eight o'clock, the students would pour out of the Siegel College of Judaic Studies after its bi-weekly hiatus as Akiva High School. You were not perfect. There would be the days when you would simply be human, distracted, and then have to slip on your overshoes and drive the 15 minutes to your carpool. There were the days when the blizzards were so bad that the school made students call to say they had arrived home, but you would be there then, waiting in line. You hated making the carpool wait rather smiling at their smiles as your car came. You were usually third in line, a winner in your daughter's mind. You would listen to WCLV, classical music, or NPR, but when they, the kids of the Heights area, got into the car, the radio would quiet and you would listen to them. You'd ask, what did she talk about in Hebrew this evening? Did they do something special for Rosh Hashanah? Prying to make sure we were learning. You heard of our fun that we did God not Israeli army training simulation with the Shlichot ambassador teachers as commanders. Or that we made matzah in the auditorium with the same Chabad rabbi who taught us how to make shofars. You'd let us talk about our days, the math quiz or the English discussion. You would listen and drive, occasionally throwing in your own questions. What was Antigone about again? Why don't you talk to the teacher? But mostly listening, like a crow in the forest, waiting to hear a clue of danger. When the other Heights kids in the car had been dropped off, you would listen to your daughter as we sat in silence, listening to each other's interest. Tomorrow on Shabbat, we will read from the Torah, Parshat Ki Tisa, Exodus 30 through 34, my bat mitzvah portion. We read of God giving the Israelites a second chance to receive the Ten Commandments. My father gave many people a second chance to maintain mobility and joint movement with dignity and a holistic sense of being. At the end of this week's reading, Moses descends from Mount Sinai. The skin of his face was giving off rays of light, Karan or Panav, my father whose Hebrew name was also Moshe, Moses, filled our lives with rays of light. And that light will continue to shine on. beautiful loving words of tribute caring and loving loving 
Milton was patient, quiet, and humble, a true gentleman, a mensch. As a child, he played doctor, and with his math skills, it was thought that he would be an engineer. But he was a people person that wanted to see some results directly from his work, so he did become a doctor. Caring for others is what he always did. And as an orthopedic surgeon, as Esther told me, he set them right. Even in his last days, in his unit at Menorah Park, Milt comforted and counseled other, other residents there. Being a doctor was his life. He was always reading those heavy medical textbooks, attending conferences which usually became the family's annual trips. If you wanted to find Milton, there were this order of ways and places to find him. Number one was at the hospital. Number two was at the house. Number three was in his garden. Four was Taylor Road Synagogue. And five was the library. Though he was often serious, he had an incredible wit. And Betsy, in the last few years, kept a journal filled with all of his clever ditties, his puns, his abilities to make the best and perfect joke. He had a great love of nature and scientific wonder, a brilliant gardener who wouldn't let you help. It was his way. He had his method for everything, and it worked. He even planted some secret fruits and vegetables. I wouldn't tell you about it until they actually sprouted, blossomed, and bloomed. Betsy has taken over that garden now. I know that uh, you have that legacy to continue among many, many others. Milt could never hurt a fly. He taught Joel how to catch flies and let them go. And once there was even a bat in the house, and he somehow caught it and let it go into the wild. He was precise. He was genuine. He had ingenuity. He could MacGyver things. Like when he was a child, he made his own Shabbat timer, Shabbat clock, so that he could listen to the radio at the specific time he wanted without having to touch anything. Born here in Cleveland to Hungarian Im immigrants, he grew up in Glenville, at some point while in high school, the family moved to Silsby. Growing up at the end of the Depression, during World War II, he learned to be frugal. Oftentimes, different family members, survivors from Europe, would live with his family when they came to the States after the war. And then when they moved on, they'd often take the family's furniture with them. After moving to the Heights on Silsby, Milt had to take three buses each day to get to his high school at Glenville. A graduate of Glenville High, he was a chess and math scholar. He ran the school store. He loved his Latin classes. In the summers, he went to Camp Wise and worked in the kitchen at Camp Galil, active in Hashomer Hadati, being raised in an Orthodox home. He attended Western Reserve University and then its medical school, studying under Dr. Spock, who gave him guidance about seeing the whole patient. He would often join Dr. Spock on his personal yacht as his ship hand. Milton got through medical school with scholarships, working as a tutor, cleaning test tubes, and even working in the morgue. He served as a doctor during the Korean War where he expanded upon corrective procedures for amputees helping them so that they could be fitted for prosthetics. He worked in New York at the Hospital for Special Surgery and Cornell Medical Center and published a paper on bone regeneration. But then his mother, Rose, became ill and he had to return home to Cleveland to be with her and that's when he began his 30 years of working at Kaiser. Milton loved working at Kaiser because there he was allowed to treat a patient holistically. He took his role as orthopedic surgeon and doctor seriously. He was known as a kind, gentle doctor that was always training others. He gave everyone proper respect, and he was so well respected. It was there where the love affair of Milton and Esther was born. It was technically love at third sight. Not first sight, love at third sight, as Esther told me. They first met at the JCC. Milton was Israeli dancing. Esther had gone with her family to an art exhibition, kicking and screaming. She didn't want to go, but they met and exchanged numbers, but nothing happened at that point. 
Sometime later, Esther was preparing for her year-long Montessori training in Italy and had to get a checkup before she went to Europe. Well, her checkup with, was with a certain Dr. Milton Moss. The next day after that checkup, this was before HIPAA and all of those other laws existed, Milton called Esther and asked her on a date, and they say the rest is history. They were married at Taylor Road Synagogue on August 27, 1979, with Rabbi Engelberg co-officiating with Rabbi Hecht. Esther, you told me that Milton had a magnetism that drew you to him. You loved having someone smarter than you, and he was simply wonderful. Together, you raised your four outstanding children. Milt was always teaching them, as you already heard, with his actions, his reading and learning, his hard work, his commitment to work. There were those special family trips, summers at the cottage on Marblehead, Ohio, so much family time going fishing together, He'd tell great stories. You'd swim in the lake. You'd watch the Cedar Point roller coasters from afar. And then the day that you go to Cedar Point, you'd always forget the tickets in the cottage. There were those trips to the com medical conferences at Disneyland and Disney World and so many other places. And whenever the family needed medical help, dad was always there. He'd have to open the office on Sundays, put you in a cast, take you out of a cast. He took care of you. You already heard as a doctor, he was patient focused. He thought of medicine as an art, observing the person, patient. He, he was always patient, but he was never on time. He often left the family to have dinner without him. He didn't follow that schedule of 15 minutes per patient visit. As Esther said, you marry a doctor, you marry his practice. You already heard Milton love classical music. He took music classes at the library on the pieces that the Cleveland Orchestra were performing and take copious notes. Growing up, Louisa, you told me that you were always so excited when your dad would pull into the driveway at the end of the day, but you were always surprised that he never came straight in. It wasn't that he was finishing a phone call. He was waiting for the concerto playing on the radio to finish. He loved word games, was very good at them, the family has an unabridged dictionary to look up the words that Milton used. All the kids got a great vocabulary from him, and Joel became known as Encyclopedia Moss to that credit. He was a voracious reader. He'd read every book, magazine, newspaper in the house. Be careful because if you had a book or any other reading thing in your room or on your shelf, it would make his way into dad's stack and it became his. He said he only needed to read something three times before he totally knew it cold. He was always health conscious with his food. He had a box of healthy recipes that no one ever ate. He was always reading up the next way to improve your brain. Judaism was, of course, one of the most important pillars of Milt's life. He davened every day with Talis and Tefillin, sometimes at Minyan, sometimes at home in that little corner. It helped him prepare for the day gave him the strength to help others. He shared his love of Yiddishkeit with the family. Every week you spent Shabbat together at home, Friday night, Shabbos lunch, Sudash Lishit, and Havdalah. Betsy remembers that one time she was going out Saturday night and tried to hurry up and take out the Havdalah set before Shabbat ended. Dad did not approve and it never happened again. Family trips were planned based on where to be for Shabbos and how to find kosher food. He loved to study gematria and the math behind it. When Joel asked his dad if he could wear tzitzit during high school, tzitzis, his dad said, you can't wear them before you know all about them and understand why you wear them. So pretty soon, dad was pulling off books from the shelf and starting an hour-long lecture to Joel. Whatever he thought you should know, he'd give you a lengthy lecture. He truly took to heart the, the commandment to teach your children. After retiring, he served as medical witness in court cases. He was a scout leader in his days, and even in early years, he was a wonderful painter. These last many years, Esther and Milt delivered meals on wheels. Esther was the driver. Milton delivered and interacted with the recipients always passing on his observations to the social worker to better help the residents in need. With his diagnosis of dementia and Alzheimer's, Milton took it in stride as best as he could. 
He read up on it, and with each transition, he accepted it. He even helped himself move into Menorah Park, understanding that it was helpful for him. Through it all, he maintained his dignity in a profound way and was grateful for all the help given to him. He blew kisses to its aides. The disease took away some of his guards and filters, and it gave an opportunity to experience his sweet and gentle soul in its most pure form. And the family said this quote from Maria Montessori, uh, Montessori summed it up. Of all things, love is the most potent. The family is most especially grateful to all those who helped care for Milton and the entire family, especially their neighbor, Sharon Germany, and all of his caretakers and aides. Milton always remains strong thanks to the love and support of you, his family. You've been by his side all along, Esther and Betsy all day, every day, especially when Milton was living at home. And then Joel, you moved back to be here to spend more time with Dad. Louise and Ben coming back and forth all the time, I know, because you updated me all the time. You should know how much Dad loved each of you, and I'm certain he knew how much you loved him. Today we can surely say that he's no longer suffering. He's at peace. Yehizi chreno baruch. May his name always be for a blessing. And we say, Amen. We'll rise now for the memorial prayer. Ermaler <laughs> And Ishmat Moshe Yaakov ben Yehuda Leiber Ezel Shalach Leolamo Begane Eden Tehei Menuchato Ahana Balarachamim Hastirei Hu Besedek Nafech Leolamim Utsaror, Vitsaror, Achaim, and Nishmato Adonai, Unachalato, Vianu, Ach, Beshalom, Al Mishkavo, Venomar, Amen. Exalted, compassionate God, grant infinite rest in your sheltering presence among the holy and pure. To the soul of Moshe Yaakov ben Yehuda Leib Rezo, Dr. Milton J. Moss, who has gone to his eternal home. Merciful one, we ask that our loved one find perfect peace in your eternal embrace. May he merit the reward for living a life of righteousness. May his soul be bound up in the bond of eternal life. And we all say, Amen. Please be seated. Following our service, interment will take place at Zion Cemetery. And then following interment, the family will return to the home and sit Shiva at the family home 2251 Edgerton Road in University Heights. Because of Shabbos, it will be a short visitation today. We'll, we will dive in Mincha as soon as we get back to the house. The family will be sitting until 6 o'clock tonight. And then Shiva will resume Sunday through Thursday. Thursday. 2 to 5 and 7 to 9. Uh, Shiva technically ends Thursday morning, but there will be some open visitation Thursday afternoon. We'll be holding minions Sunday through Wednesday evening at 7 p.m. Donations can be made to Alzheimer's Association, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, or Menorah Park. 